Everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're here with artist Jen Davis, celebrating exhibition pathways and formations. Uh, it's just been it's been a pleasure. I mean, as like every time we do an artist talk, I'm like, hey, it's, it's been such a pleasure. But all the artists we work with are great, and we've just been keeping that going. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. You're you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, so. Joe, we put this show together, I'd say, pretty easily, right? Like, uh, you, like we, so we met at Joe's home. Uh, she invited us out, we had hot tea waiting for us, we got this in your studio and we talk about art and the kind of things we wanna share and, and kind of light paths, and then we started talking about the work that we're going to bring into this exhibition. And you sort of already had the idea in place that you, you wanted it to be not Quite a retrospective, but to take from different parts of your uh, artistic journey and bring that to the gallery space. So yeah. um, I suppose just to, to get straight into it, but can you kind of take us through maybe what a couple of these like little pockets of, of time are about where they started, where they began, and kind of walk us through that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi guys. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, um, this painting kind of is a marker for me because I consider it really the last um, significant work that I made before I had children. Um, at that time, I was making painting. Painting was my life and I was very um, dedicated to making work and showing work. And what happens when you are a mother a lot of times is things shift and um, I don't know if it was necessarily because of motherhood, but it really, painting sort of started to take more of a sideline for me um, for many years. I would still make work and I always carried a sketchbook, um, but it had a different place in my life. And um, due to some significant things that happened in my life, back in 2021, I, um, I was at this place where I was kind of like knocked down and um, and I started and had the time and had the space to actually start creating again. And I was creating in a new way where um, it was playful, but I also, I found meditation and I found these things in my life that after struggling with depression for many, many years, it was a time where um, I, making art without thinking about will this ever be shown anywhere or what will people think or any like ambitions with the pieces it was purely um, it was purely expression and so this series of work came about because I, I stumbled across this book um, called feeling good it was like positive psychology like how to like how to be a happy person and it was a hilarious book. It's, it was published in like the 90s. And um, I became enamored with the language in there. It was very patriarchal. It was very like, um, you know, stop your whining and just just think positively and think happy thoughts and everything will be okay. <laughs> and so I found it ridiculous and I loved it. I just thought the idea of that, but just the language itself. And so I started cutting pieces out and making these works, which um, tell different stories about the way the way one's journey through life can go. Um, so they marked this sort of re-entry into art making um, in a place with, I, I would, not that there's more depth in how I was making things, but um, it was more of an ethereal response. And so that was 2021 and then in 2020, and that the last piece over there is part of the series, the other, the ink drawing, understanding your moves. Um, and then the watercolor and these painting pieces after that are all from 2023. Um, and they really sprang from a friend of mine got me a set of watercolors from Curio. And <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm not putting in a plug, but I am putting in a plug. <laughs> These beautiful Japanese watercolors. And I always, um, like watercolors for me and my boys had around forever, you know, I would always put them traveling and have it with me. 
but because of the viscosity and the, um, the saturation of these paints, I just became totally enthralled in the medium and in the actual, the forms that would come out of the brush and the way that would be applied. And, um, and these are what came out of that. I don't know what you asked. But hopefully, <laughs> 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 just kind of talking through timeline. Yeah, uh, like 2023. Yeah, and, I, and so 2023 and 2021 and 2006. Yeah. So there's, uh, I see it from 2006 to 2021, pretty big jump. Yeah. Uh, and then from 21 to 23, not as big, but super significant because we are working our way through the pandemic. Slowly starting to crawl out from that. And um, I think probably a lot of us found, uh, at least a lot of people who I think have a creative practice, or even those who didn't think they did, kind of maybe even found one during pandemic time and after, just as kind of a way to kind of work through some of the stuff that that uh, dredged up and all this. So uh, I think that timeline is kind of important to kind of just kind of move us forward. And we hung the show in a, in a way that tried to emphasize that. Uh, this piece, it's this it's just visually, it's it's so vibrant, it's such a large presence in the room that we felt like it needed to be on this back wall. Uh, but then when we were installing the, the rest of the exhibition, we were thinking like, okay, like, it's sort of chronological, but that almost kind of came secondarily. It was more like these, um, we call them black and white pieces because they're largely devoid of color except for that strange off whiteness of the paper, which I think is kind of funny because you would otherwise call it maybe you'd call it on white paper. But it's just a different color. And then it just kind of gets more saturated as you move down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably one of the best things about having the space is when we get to spend real time with our work, <coughs> uh, we can start making more connections that maybe we didn't even see uh, when we were first introduced to or even in the first couple of weeks of uh, living with it. But um, for me, these, uh, the Neuropathways series, I feel like are very much evident in the newer works too. I feel like just probably in their creation. These these seem fun uh, in a way that it's like like it's it's not fun in like the ha ha way. It's just fun as in like I'm going to just make this and see how it goes. And like you find this thing that says feeling good, feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. Like you just see that repeated all the time. So I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to make it go to this you know kind of uh, pointless. Kind of smattering, kind of dissolution of marks, and then an arrow takes you to another thing that makes sense as you read it together, but they're sort of nonsensical in a way. Um, and I feel like that fun, that kind of play carried over into the watercolor pieces. Like the actions you're making are the same. Um, the, they sort of have moments of collage where it's like, I'm going to take this really dense piece and put it next to this really like, milky piece. Mm -hmm. Um, do you feel that there are connection going from that series into that series, or like when you're in the studio making, is it is it just a do you do you play? I suppose like do you allow yourself to have fun and then take that series? Yeah, I mean absolutely. These are all these were all about play, um, and I think that these are actually more serious. I mean, when I'm in the studio, I am playing. Like definitely, that's that's how I make work. It's it's completely process oriented. See where it takes me, um, and if I'm not playing, then I'm like, I gotta, I gotta like re-register and see what's going on. But, um, but it, yeah, in a way, if these were a little more serious, like they're playful, because I think I think some of it's funny. But, um, but I was thinking a lot about the brain. I mean, they're called neural pathways because um, I was studying the brain at the time, and I was thinking a lot about about the neural connectors and the ways that things, I mean, when you become my age, I don't know if it's middle age, I don't know, 40s, 45, whatever, 47, you get a certain age and <laughs> things get clogged up in there. And there's like, there's some pathway, it's somebody, a neuropharmacist checked me, it's like, there's, it's like our brains are like little cities and um, after time, there's like 
alleyways where like a wall's been built up in the middle out of nowhere, and there's buildings where some of them are crumbled and they just got built over, and um, and those things can all kind of be cleaned out through various methods. Um, but it was interesting to me like how that played out in um, one's life uh, from really from from birth to death. So there was, these were much more cerebral, I would say, in a lot of ways. Like, I definitely had um, some intentions about what I was doing, but yes, playing, like laughing along the way through the book. And, but there's a vocabulary in there. There's, there's a lot of, there's symbols that I use over and over in each of those that means different things. Yeah. So. so yeah, it's interesting. I think these play with this one, this community nicely. Like, when I think about the relationship, I mean, we were looking, there was a lot of, I have a lot of paintings. He does. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, there was something about this one that just kind of resolved. Mm -hmm. For sure. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm forgetting the name of the piece now, but the, the one that's kind of in the center of the room that's by itself. Uh, Scientific animism? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing that in here. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of got this, this root system where this kind of like this bleed out uh, and then there, you know, there's got the kind of, it's, it's funny to hear people talk about what these are. And Matt, like I saw you do it a minute ago, you're going like this. Uh, when, when people talk about the work, they're like, they're like, whatever this is, like that kind of, some people are calling them like, like flyaways or some people are thinking those in this kind of spirit or, uh, I mean, it's it, it, yeah, the, like all the little, yeah. the little, yeah, marks. yeah, all the little marks, but like even like the hatch marks are, are like uh, they, the piece that you can kind of take on with like, like grains of rice. Like, mm -hmm. Or think, oh, maybe that's murmurations, or maybe that's like natural, like wind formations, or they could be waterways. Like people were just seeing so many different things in them. Um, and uh, someone had made a connection that they were thinking that these pieces felt much like board games. Mm -hmm. Where it was, you know, like sheets and ladders, where if you land on this thing, you slide down to that part, but then it just keeps right back to the beginning again. Yeah, like the kind yeah, of the kind of frustration that comes with trying to navigate a game board like that, yeah. uh, where the rules can sometimes be a little wacky and mm -hmm. things don't always, uh, you know, go your way. And then the same person, when they were looking at your watercolor pieces, thought that they felt like um, like the game boards kind of made it real, like mm -hmm. if you could traverse them, that's what the landscape of them would look like. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told them that you would. I was like, oh man, just <laughs> uh, So I've been like scrolling out in a way waiting for our talk because I, I know like you, I mean, you know when you would pop in, you're always like, so what are people saying? Like, what are yeah. people thinking? And uh, I think that kind of plays into and talks very much about just the way you are. Like you're always interested in what other people are doing or what they're thinking or how, they're, how they are um, and then how they kind of see the world. And I feel like it's kind of coming through in your paintings. Um, and when you when you sit down to make, like, are you are you going in with a plan, or do you like are you saying, okay, I know I'm using this palette, or like I'm making watercolor right now, so I'm going to continue that, or do you allow yourself ever just to switch gears, or are you doing multiple things at a time? Like, what's your what's a typical day in your studio like? Yeah, it's all of the above. I have like right now, for example, I have um, one oil painting going. Um, a huge watercolor, like a giant piece of paper on the wall. Um, another painting, another drawing that's just a ton of like graphite that I'm kind of manipulating. So, but I'm all, but I'm just always ever since that set of watercolors, it's like that's what I want to use. Like I gravitate towards that when I sit down in my studio space in the morning. Um, I work. I'll just have small like a small paper in front of me, and I just will see what color the brush wants to go to. Like I'll have my palette of watercolors just ready to go, the watercolors ready to go, and I start from there. And I just see where the brush wants to go, and um, go to the next color. Yeah, until then I, there comes a point where I, where I actually then step away and, um, and Listen to what it needs, I guess. Kind of like go from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I even feel like that kind of comes out of your statement too. Like, 
What are the other things? Uh, I'm driven by breath, stillness, pleasure, pain, and creation to make art to describe the ineffable. Um, like you, when you go into your studio, are you going in with the with the intention of like this is what I'm trying to work through, or do you just kind of let material speak and then move your way through it? Um, I'm I'm incredibly curious and and sort of obsessed with the the um, continuous repetition in nature and the um, microcosm, macrocosm aspect of things, if that's making any sense. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what I observe in the world, that's what I am drawn to when I'm in nature, that's what I'm drawn to when I see images, scientific images. Um, and I think that's what's in, that's the ineffable is like how do you how do you describe that? Um, so that's always in me. Like that's always kind of this um, thing that's stirring me. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it's a conscious like I'm gonna sit down and think about how. I mean, I have though. Like I have definitely had times where I will look at an image of something microscopic under the sea, and I'll I'll work on. Um, recreating it, drawing or painting, you know, and seeing how that can play out. And I'll play around in that way. But yeah, it's really very intuitive. The process is very intuitive. And then I do, then I'll have times where I take a break and I think about it and I think about what's, how things are playing together and then we'll manipulate things forward in that way. Like these paintings, um, you know, I would start making them and then they just started, a lot of them just became landscapes. And so I would push that. You know, I would start to see formal things arrive and kind of play with that space and see how I could um, push it. I don't know, I lost my train of thought. Well, so <laughs> like, do, you, do you consider them abstractions? Yeah. Well, it's, and like you, you, you kind of, uh, said something it was just a moment where you're like, oh, so like formal things start to come up and you're like, oh, I recognize that now and then move forward with them. Um, and I'm always fascinated by like how artists define abstraction, representation, you know, like where they where they seat themselves mm -hmm. in the in the I don't know, timeline's not quite the right word, but the the mass of art that's been made mm -hmm. in the past and things are being made right now. Like we so we were at dinner just uh, you know, 45 minutes ago, talking about it was lovely. <laughs> how we, how we like, find ourselves in the world. And and, and uh, social media, of course, came up, and we're talking about making Instagram reels and, and generating content and like how that can be really taxing and exhausting when you, you know, you're putting things out there and you're hoping people are seeing them. Um, so, and I feel like that whole thing is, in itself is such an abstract concept, too. So, uh, do you? In a roundabout way, do you see yourself as an abstract artist, or like where do you see yourself? Absolutely abstract. I mean, I was trained by abstract expressionist painters in New York when I was I was at Vice Museums and I studied fine art there, and that they were like from the sixties, you know, had lived through all of the, this like the WPA, you know, time period when artists were were just scraping by and getting paid to make art um, uh, by the government. And and so, yeah, I mean, I always kind of approach things from, I think, an abstract expressionist angle. I mean, I certainly, I do a lot of representational stuff. I mean, I, I do paint, I'll paint figures. I do a lot of things that are clearly not abstract, but like, that's where my heart, I mean, that's really what But yeah, I know it's weird because it's some of that stuff. It's like, oh, this looks like it could be a landscape in outer space. Could be, <laughs> but it, it could be a number of other things too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, having known you for what, probably the better part of a decade, right? Like we've known each other in some capacity for quite a long time. Um, like I feel like you've you've always been really interested in other people. And giving them opportunity to, you know, find themselves in, you know, in a space that's 
helpful to them or welcoming to them. And I think you're trying to create that same thing through the work that you're making too. And uh, bringing it back into just like more uh, guest experiences. Like when people look through these, they, some, some people really find themselves in it and like, they're like, oh my gosh, like, like this artist is like working through some of the same stuff I am. And like, oh, yeah, like some people say like, oh, personal growth, wouldn't it be that easy? Like if you could just start there and, you know, kind of buy that slide down and then you end up here. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and I, so I, I think that abstraction really allows people to enter artworks differently. It's not so much you telling them what to see so much as like a potential like a still life could be or, uh, you know, like a piece of figurative work. Like it, it, it's very descriptive and it kind of tells you like this is what I intended to paint. Mm -hmm. With abstraction, I think we are doing that, but we're opening the door a lot more for interpretation and allowing people to bring themselves to it and find themselves in it and then get lost in it and then refine themselves in it. Uh, do you, do you uh, I guess, find an appreciation in allowing other people to bring themselves to your work? Or is it so much like, this is, I really want you to get this. And like, do you ever feel like I'm like, ah, they, they didn't quite get it, but okay, maybe that's fine. Like, where do you, where do you fall with that? I mean, I love that you say that, that interest in people is um, it's something I would have brought into you know, the thinking about my work, but you're right, you know, you're right, like, what kind of people, the stories of how they work. So, um, but yeah, no, it, it's, that's what I love about abstract art, and I think, um, I think it's, uh, it's exactly right, I think a successful piece, you know, can speak to anybody at any point. I mean, somebody's gonna be drawn to one piece or another, one artist or another, but if it hits you, um, it's hitting you in a place that has a lot of meaning and significance, and yeah, you're able to bring forth some of yourself into it. And I think hopefully it becomes, um, it does become some sort of growth process, even if it's like a micro growth, you know, into understanding yourself So you have a space at the candy factory. Yes. Right? And you've been, like actually there's probably a number of candy factory folk here. There Can I, are I'm, some candy factory folk. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm almost positive the entire building has been through at some point already to see your show. Like they'll come in, oh. they'll come in, in groups and be like, oh, we're candy factory, we're here to see each other. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, you've got a really good uh, you know, group of people that are paying attention to what you're doing there. But I also know that you're sharing a lot of what you're doing with them, right? Like you're doing uh, kind of like breakout sessions or creative sessions where you can just come in and sit down, play with material, allow yourself to disconnect for a little bit and mm -hmm. make something fun. And then whether it's something more serious comes out of that or if it was just a moment for you to disconnect and forget about your day and make something interesting, mm -hmm. they can. Um, so, you know, do you see yourself going farther into that, or are you, like, what do you, what do you, I feel like we all kind of get something out of that, too. Like, as a professor, like, I find great satisfaction in watching a student, like, actually take something and, like, see that moment go off and, like, oh, oh my god, I just got it. Um, and maybe I help them get there, or maybe it's just giving them space to figure it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I, su I suppose the question is there, like, when you watch people make things in your space and you're helping them get there, do you take any of that back into your maybe into what you're making more now. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I'm definitely learning. Since I've started sharing, um, like you're saying, creating space for people to be making art and sharing materials and ideas, I'm learning from, yes, everybody who's around me, for sure. So bringing some of that back. Um, and seeing how people, I mean, everybody approaches uh, different materials differently, and so seeing how people approach their work uh, can often be surprising. Um, yeah, uh, it's been fantastic, though. I mean, I I I find it to be um, amazing. Like that moment when people are catching on and like 
started to make something and there's a discovery happening that they've never, maybe they've never water her before or they've never felt comfortable with it and they're starting to get it, it's really exciting. Um, and it surprises me too. You know, I think when you're so used to doing something, like I've been making art forever, I'm always surprised that like, oh, not everybody, you know, just knows that and kind of, <laughs> like it gives you an appreciation too for, um, for, your, for your own, for how, maybe how far you've come. And, uh, you know, with watercolor, when people take a look at these, they're like, oh my gosh, like, I feel like this would just turn into a muddy mess the minute I tried to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, you're kind of talking about like, well, how about everyone who just maybe do it that way? Like, um, maybe bringing it back in and kind of talking a little bit more technically for a moment, like, how do you build these pieces? Uh, are you, well, I'll let you walk into that when I ask you the question. Yeah. Um you know, I found that like the key for me is uh, that water to paint ratio on the brush. I don't know how many people in here use watercolor or are familiar with watercolor. Yeah, have. <laughs> okay. Um, I get really turned off when there's a lot of water on the paper. Like, I <laughs> it's a turn off for me. <laughs> and you know, people will show like wet on wet methods and different ways to work with water on paper. Um, for me, it's so important to just have a very saturated color on the brush. And um, I just, I, I start to, like I said, I'll start with a color. I'll start with something that's gonna ground me into the piece. Um, and from there, you know, put that on the paper. And then from there, I'm going back in, I'm getting the, the brush. I mean, this is really technical, is this what you want? Yes, yes. Okay, I'm getting the brush <laughs> more wet. You know, always controlling it with the back, but um, from there, starting to explore the pigment and and like, so after a really nice like saturated deep layers on there, then going back in with the water and, and really exploring it, and then maybe going back with another color again, not with all that water on it, but bringing it back in. Um, one of the most amazing things about watercolor is that it, you just always work back into it. I mean, virtually always. Um, it can be dry for weeks or more, and you can come back and bring water into it and change the whole thing. Um, so that's, I mean, that's really the kind of nuance is laying down a ground color in some shape or form, and then coming back in with a really controlled amount of water in the brush and then doing it from there. A lot of those ones, are, well, there's a lot of strokes of just like really um, quickly But yeah, and then those, the dots or the, the whatever they are, I don't know what they are. <laughs> but they, they're sometimes they're like orbs. <clears throat> they kind of come in there too. They like, they have to, they, they'll just come in and it's describing, it's like describing something. I'm, I'm yeah, vague. Well, no, but I'm, I'm sure I'm sorry. But I'm glad you gave it that. <laughs> like, it, like you say, it's describing something. Um, yeah. And I, I, I feel like, a lot of us who have a creative practice, or even like maybe we're we're writers, painters, sculptors, like anything that we're that we're building, we kind of have things that we like to do for ourselves. Like, oh, this is like I see enough in these pieces that it, it's not just a, like a random happening. Like you employ these things as a device to help either move us through them or draw attention to sometimes pull attention away from. Yeah. So I'm glad that you, like, you kind of gave it a, a reason, you know, how you describe something. I think that's all it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't need to be, oh yeah, they actually, that is, that is a memoration of birth, or that is, you know, like the unseen energy of the, of the universe. It's just, mm -hmm. I use it as a way to describe something. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and, and I think with these two, there are, there are these times where it's about, I do enter the space of the viewer going through it. I mean, maybe it's not consciously the viewer, but an idea of like, there's always a story. Like there's always a story in each of them. Well, you're a viewer of art, right? Like you look at, yeah. you look at other artists, you look at art all the time, and you, like if you're, if you're a trained artist, it doesn't matter if you, you know, just picked up a book at a young age and read a little bit about composition. Like we, or if you've been through art school or, take, or taking like an introductory art course, you, 
inevitably have to recognize composition. And it's, you know, try to keep them inside. Don't let them leave the piece or go away. Like, always try to keep them moving around the piece. And I largely, well, I shouldn't even say largely. I agree with that to a point, but sometimes it's, it's interesting to have something take you away and into the next one. Um, and I, I feel like your, your pieces are largely contained. Like, if you, if you take a, a pretty quick glance across the room, they don't often break the edge. Or the ones that do, I think, do it really intentionally. But the others kind of have a negative space around them that keep them together. Uh, but they have moments where they will allow you to move off of them. And then it's, I think, in an exhibition like this, it's great where when you move off of them, it takes you to another one of your pieces. Um, has to do with the placement, maybe. Well, we had, so we did really have fun with placement. Uh, when it when it came to that that wall, uh, Nicole and I had a discussion about like how much space do we put between these things, and that that after the large uh, ink piece, there's five. Uh, they feel really tight. They feel really condensed. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of movement, there's a lot of mark making happening in those pieces, so we thought it would be nice to kind of keep them a little tighter together, and then that larger piece in the center kind of starts to make way for more space. Your pieces start to get more air around them, they start to feel a little bit more farther away, mm -hmm. like in terms of like the point of view of you as the person making them, you feel farther away from them, mm -hmm. so we decided to give them more space and stretch them out across the wall. Um, but. Yeah, I suppose placement has a lot to do with that. But I like that. I like that there's moments where it just lets you move off of them. It doesn't always try to keep you. Right, but I feel like that's you as a person. You're, you're not trying to monopolize someone's time all the time. You're not making it all about yourself. Like the, I mean, even just a moment ago, you're having a conversation up here and you know, talking with uh, oh, was that a name? And I had it just a moment ago. Um, costume designer. Janelle. Janelle. Yeah, like the, the first question was, how'd you get into that? Like, it wasn't like, thanks for coming to my show, and like, work, and like, let me talk to you and find out what you're about. Yeah, it's pretty. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, I see it. I see it at work. <laughs> I see it at work. So. That's cool. Yeah. And, um, yeah. This is, I, I love the show. I always do. Um, we don't put work on the walls that we're not. 100% confident in, and we trust the artist to, you know, help us and, and bring yourself to it. And I think you totally brought yourself to this. Thing. And when we, you know, when we met at your home, um, not all of these pieces were finished or even created. But we, like you, you helped us. You took us there, and you like made sure that when we left that night, that we were like, oh, we know what we're getting involved in, and I think you delivered in a really big way. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah. And we were talking, I remember when we were there, we, were, we had this idea too, you were interested in like some of the scraps. Because I have a lot of what I'll do when I paint, I'm always using a, another piece of paper to test colors out before I put on the paper. And then I fall in love with what ends up. Mm -hmm. And that's what ends up. It's always like, I'll save them because I can make them into things. And um, you were interested in those and like the yeah. rags yes. and all the other, like, things around it. Mm -hmm. Do any of you do that? Like do any of you keep like little like testers or just things like I, I do this in my studio too. Like I'll load up a brush and I'm like, oh did I get too much on that? And I just swipe it on a piece of paper and I'm like, oh no that's actually pretty good. And then I go into the piece with it and then I keep them and I end up doing something else with them where I just admire them for being weird little abstractions of the abstract piece I just made. I think that's always really cool too. But I'll get like if I, if I like what I put down, but that like if I put something down and it's like a little too much color than I wanted, it's like oh man, where can I use this? Because I don't want to use this. It's so it's so beautiful, you know. So I'll just find find little spots. But then you can even work back into like the stuff that's on the paper. It's a watercolor. It just like it keeps going. Yeah, I sometimes think that though as a moment of loss, where it's like yeah. oh no, I definitely put too much on this, but I I can't use it anywhere else, and yeah. I. Kind of force myself to wash my brush out. I'm like, shit, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but in the, and maybe I shouldn't do that so much. Or maybe I should just keep like wasting it on the on those little scraps. But I feel like the more attention you give to those scraps, then they cease to become scraps. Yeah. Right. Like they become too precious. And you're like, oh no. Like then you find yourself trying to compose them, and you're like, oh stop it. Oh yeah. Uh, 
Just yeah. let them be there. Let them be themselves, and they'll come back around later. They need great bookmarks. Yeah. <laughs> Cards. <laughs> yeah. Collage items. Start doing collaging with watercolor more, which is really fun. And um, so we had a, an artist and friend, probably to a lot of people in this room, Angie Hollenadel, Jenny's. Is that Jenny's partner? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she actually used her her water watercolor stained uh, paper towels as a mat for the piece. Like they mm -hmm. laid them in the frame and then put the piece on top of it, which were sketches, but they were just, oh my god, that's so mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like now more than ever I can't let go of paper towels that I have in my studio. I'm like, well, I know what Angie did. Yeah, it's interesting how the, the little scraps kind of come back into the work, or you'll, you'll make a mark on it, and you're like, oh, that's great, I'm going to bring that into this piece. Yeah. Yeah. So, Joe, like, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on seeing it all together? Because you also weren't, you weren't present for the install, you were kind of like, here it is, like, see you later, it's going to be a surprise, and mm -hmm. we had it, we got it installed pretty quickly, but yeah. when you guys came, when you came over for the first time and saw it, like, what was the, what was the feeling, the reaction? Um... I, I mean, I guess joy, I felt very, it's, you know, it's, it's such a treasure to be able to have your work up in a space, and especially if this is my first time it's just been my work, I've always had my stuff in group shows, mm -hmm. so to have a solo show and to have it um, really hung with such intention, um, it was, it's, it's something else, it's something special. Um, and I just love, I mean, the way that the lighting on this thing is, Jumps off the wall. Yeah, and that was kind of in the way. It can yeah, be, a, it can be a tough surprised. thing to leave your work behind and like put it in someone else's hands and hope that they. I didn't have any well. problem with that. <laughs> 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 you guys just treat it much better than I would. So. Well, I think we, we know how it goes. Like you know, both Nicole and I are artists, and, and I think so many of us, you know, if we're given an opportunity to show, it it sometimes means, okay, great, like, here's your month, but also you have to come and install it, and you have to come and take it down. Yeah. And you have to be the one to, you know, break the level out and make, and like, don't put too many holes in the wall, or. Oh, I mean, like, it's such a luxury. It's such, it's, I felt so fancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something that's important to us, because when we opened the space, we wanted to make sure that the artists that we're showing, we want their priority to be to make the work and get it to us, and then we take it from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, you know, try to do our best to make sure that we're putting up together a really good show. And uh, and you, I mean, you, you brought the work. Like, there's a lot of pieces mm -hmm. here. Uh, and yeah, kind of working through that whole thing too, because you know they were they were being framed as they were being made, and it was like, how oh, maybe should I bring? Let's just bring all of them, and we'll we'll find a way. And I don't know that I don't think we did end up editing any out, or maybe one or two. Uh, yeah. But. The size of the work and, and just the, the cohesiveness of it, I think, made the whole thing feel really good. And uh, kind of having an idea of what those look like ahead of time helps us put yeah. together things. Yeah, I like the story that happens from like starting here and moving through. Um, it, make, it makes sense to me, not necessarily like the the way that I was explaining the pieces to you guys in the beginning, but just as, as any viewer coming in and kind of having this like experience with this one, which is a lot, and it's interesting, it was just so interesting to hear what people felt from it, like the visceral reactions, mm -hmm. um, but then this more sparse, kind of quiet, um, well not quiet necessarily each piece, but just a little bit, it's a different kind of space, a different, put together different space and going into the color. But yeah, I was surprised people, not as surprised, but I, I didn't expect, some people were seeing really like apocalyptic things in here. Is that what, do a lot of people see that? I don't know. It's interesting. There's no wrong answer. <laughs> but, um, we so that was cool to me, and I don't know if in 2000, like, I don't know if it's just because of the times right now, or what? We had a group of artists from Friendship Heart in, and, uh, and they, they always spend time with the, with the show, and they kind of talk through their favorite pieces, and, uh, and when they came to this one, uh, one person did feel like it was kind of um, well, yeah, but like wartime. Like they 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 saw the figures in this, like they were reading these as as little you know as people, and then they were reading you know these as 
you know, kind of scorched earth where things have been broken. And then someone right next to him felt the complete opposite, and he just thought that it was really like fun and exuberant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's always great to, or at least fascinating to hear people read some of it. And with this piece being so big and so attention grabbing, the wall text comes with it. Like when they when they stand in front of this, they see this, and then they come in and they read it. And then, like there's there's some uh, there's some heavy things in that. Mm. That when they read that and they start to understand, like sometimes they'll either start there and they work their way back, and then they read this like, oh my gosh, or they'll start here and then they work through the exhibition with that in their mind, and they come out on the other side of it. And like they, I don't know. I feel like everyone who's really engaged with the work is connected with it, and it, it hasn't hit anybody and just like. So, um, yeah, I think your like the work is really sticking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when I made this painting, I was like surprised at what came out of me. Like a lot of times, I'll make things that are just fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> and like now, I think I mean I was younger then, and I don't think I had as much. Um, I don't think I knew myself as well. I mean, it was like twenty years ago, but. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, even with some of these, it's like, what the hell is that? Yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> it's so interesting. Yeah, those are good moments, though, when you can surprise mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe, thank you so much. Um, I, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> do, we, do we have any questions for Joe before we kind of wrap things up for the evening? Well, I have like a comment, I guess. Maybe it might turn into a question. Okay. So when I met Joe, it was like on a screen because it was COVID, and I remember seeing you had like box wallpaper in the background. It was probably one of your kids' rooms or something. Anyway, I just thought like, wow, I'm just like so enthralled to like. Well, first off, like enthralled to like meet you, and then to see the wallpaper, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like you have this part of your personality that's really like bubbly and like very playful and fun um, but then it's almost like you're you're either sympathizing with yourself or, or someone um, with some of these works which is really cool um, and it, it is a lot more like serious than I would think imagine from you but it's also like really like that's like this mysterious element, I guess, to you. You know it's gone here. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I just think that it's really cool. Um, but I guess like a, a thing about artists right now, at least in like uh, Lancaster area, I feel like there's kind of like a new, there's a different air going around about like artists how we're exhibiting our work and where we're showing our work, social media, sorry, it's getting really long. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. but, um, you know, so I really appreciate Curio too, because you guys kind of seem like a fresh air, like fresh air, um, like uh, something that we can go to, um, you know, like that's available, you know, um, for artists. But I guess, yeah, like that, that is just really encouraging to me, I, I guess. Because there's other parts of art world in Lancaster that I feel like are tired and like um, not maybe like where, maybe that's not where artists are um, in a way being found or I don't know, that, that sort of thing anymore. Um, or they are, but there's just you know, it's just a different group um, that's watching those artists, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like really not in it anymore because I sort of have my own kind of journey like this, and it was art. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Oh, I shouldn't do that anymore. 
Um, but now, anyway, so this is kind of encouraging because I sort of see that in me too, which is like this, okay, I, I had this point where I was, this is my life. And then, you know, for you, you had to, you had to, um, you know, put, put some things aside and, and now you're coming out of that, which is a pretty advantage too. Cool. Anyway, I don't have a question. <laughs>
the more we can come together, the more we can have spaces like this, where it's really just about art and it's really about um, the artwork and supporting each other, um, then the more we can bring about something like that. You know, when we're all separated and we all have our little pockets of where we're working, um, there's no, you know, we don't, people can ignore the fact that we really need this stuff in, the, in, the, in this city. But if we can come together and demand it, it's a whole different situation, you know? Um, I, just a lot of you know, I, I leave an open studio every Saturday over at the candy factory. You know, I bet everyone knows what the candy factory is. Oh. There were murmurs. <laughs> really? <laughs> so the candy factory over, um, just uh, like a block and a half that way, it's next to Building Character, and it's a it's a community. Um, you can be a member. It's like a hundred bucks a month, and you get so much out of it. You know, plug Candy Factory. I am always plugging here in the Candy Factory. I need to like find new places. It's just a co-working space. <laughs> it's a co-working space, and there's a social aspect to it. There's clubs, and it's all just a very positive sharing environment. But so every Saturday from 10 to 12, you can come and bring an art project you're working on, or if you don't have anything, I'll have some materials and give you some tips and stuff. There's always just coffee flowing, and people will come and just like write in the corner, you know, talk to anybody, but it's just a place to be. But I think, and there's other things like that happening, you know. Maybe the more we can kind of um, make those spaces for it to come together, the better. Yeah. Agreed. Thank you. you guys didn't you have workshops in the sketchbook club? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a, a sketch club we've been doing for almost five years. Uh, Thursday evenings, oh, seven to nine. Years. Oh, no, six years, geez, yeah. <laughs> From seven to nine p.m., you can come down and hang out with us. It's free, you don't have to call or register. You can just bring a sketchbook, and even if you don't have one of those, we'll get you a sheet of paper and a pencil, and you can hang out and draw with us, or write, or sculpt, or sew, or crochet, or just sit and talk. And yeah, it's always, it's great. Yeah, they really hang like it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other questions for Joe before we wrap it up? I'm curious about where you get your titles from. I found particularly down there that it seemed like the titles were informing how I was looking at things. Oh, really? How so? Tell me. Well, I have to go look at the actual title on this one. But, but it, was, it was like, I, 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 in the way the, the dot things were moving, it, it, they would say something down here, like, oh, yeah. Like the SOS piece. Yeah. Generally, yeah. yeah. They were like, going like the you know. Well, the, the way they moved around within it, it seemed like the titles made sense. They, they went together to me. I was wondering if you had really thought about that, or if you just kind of skipped titles on them, or. There's, uh, there's one in here I can think of that I just stuck a title on. But the, <laughs> I won't tell you which one. But the, um, the no, you know, when I said that there's stories in there, there absolutely are. Like yeah, that's what I develop a relationship, and there's a story that's happening. It's like a narrative in my head, and then the title is generally talking about that story. Okay, so yeah. the two really do. Yeah. And I use the story. I'm gonna read the story of that the way he's reading, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, I thought so, but I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes uh, I'll be listening to music when I'm making a painting and I'm, I'm thinking about a title and the, it's like in the music. And so wow. that was okay. good. But those are all, yeah, I can't think of only that one that's been happening on here. Well, I was wondering too, it struck me that these seem to be inward looking and that section seems to be more outward looking. Is that, am I crazy or? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think it's really, honestly, it's like whatever you feel from it. I would say, are you wondering from my perspective of when I was making it? Or? Well, yeah, yeah, well, it, yeah, it, it just struck me that there's these two different things going yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, yeah, like this is very much, it's like internal, right, where that you could almost be a clue that's maybe separated from some of them in a landscape sort of way. So I could, yeah, I would say that's, 
That's interesting. I talk a lot about these pieces, and I see them almost as self-portraits of sorts. Girl, what? Tell me. I know, yeah. just like a, a, some of your personal experiences. Like I kind of trying to see some of. I see them as very delicate, but also very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I, I maybe relate it to some of your life experiences. And I'm like, I feel like I see you as a person and some of the things you've lived through in these landscapes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I. I differ with you, Mike, in that I'm like, these feel very personal to me. Yeah. But maybe they not. Are very yeah. Personal. Well, no, I'm not so much saying personal. But, but like, like inward, you were thinking outward. Look, or this I'm speaking to myself, this I'm speaking mm -hmm. to the world. A lot of these were about survival. I mean, this, when I was making this work, it was, it was an excruciating time in my life. And um, they were the ways that I, got through a lot of it. So that makes sense to me. It was really cool, yeah, for sure. Where this was like, kind of this awakening time to here. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Always remember you guys in just this moment. Should we look like we're listening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so we can hang out for a bit. We have some uh, refreshments in the back there. Help